we are sitting on a $500 trillion time bomb. And this is a powder keg just waiting to explode. In fact, this makes the US national debt of $33 trillion look like child's play. And guess who might be the trigger man for this global meltdown? It's none other than our favorite central banker in the world, Jerome Powell. And let's really quantify this problem because every day the ticking gets louder and louder. We already had two events that are ripples of a bigger tsunami that's coming for the global economy. So what is this time bomb we are talking about? Is interest rate derivatives? Is the off-balance sheet liabilities that are primed to explode the longer we stay in this high interest rate environment? And just in 2022, we are sitting on $502 trillion worth of interest rate derivatives. In fact, that is almost 80% of all derivatives in the world. And guess which currency all this stuff are denominated in? The majority is in US dollars, of course. The global reserve currency is on track to destroy the world economy again. So what are interest rate derivatives? Now, these are simply financial instruments the big banks, hedge funds, and big corporations use to play around with interest rates. And this includes your interest rate swaps, options, and forward agreements. It's a very opaque market that no one really knows the true exposure. $500 trillion is just an estimate from the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS. It could be magnitude small, and we truly don't know how bad the situation can get. We only see the true damage once interest rates hit a certain point. And guess what, guys? Things are beginning to look really, really bad for the Federal Reserve's inflation fight. The rate hikes aren't over, and half a quadrillion dollar time bomb is getting pushed to the edge of oblivion. We have Bowman from the Federal Reserve telling us that multiple rate hikes are necessary to curb inflation. And here's the funny part. She admits that higher energy prices are hurting price growth progress. Yes, OPEC Plus is winning against the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes, but we shouldn't be too happy about it because this is about to push the global economy off a cliff. Bowman is calling for an independent third party review of this year's bank failures. And you have to ask yourself why. Maybe it's because of how much exposure all these big banks have to interest rates. No one on planet Earth knows how much derivatives are tied to interest rates on their balance sheet. It is so opaque that I bet even the banks themselves can't fully quantify their full exposure and how deep the rabbit hole truly goes. And let's take a deep breath. Let's sit back and recall the 08 crisis. We know it was tied to real estate. But the real cost that toppled the global economy was the use of derivatives. Now, let me define what they are. It's simply a financial contract whose value is tied to an underlying asset. For example, back in 08, banks had a stroke of genius and they decided to bundle up all the mortgages together. They took all the nasty loans, threw them into a pot and conjured something up called a mortgage-backed security or MBS. And as you can see here, these MBS derivatives are tied to the mortgage market. As long as homeowners could pay their monthly mortgage payments, these MBS would be fine. But we all know what happened back in 08, don't we? All those stupid no income and no job loans started to default and this caused all the MBS to suddenly go underwater. They became toxic and turned out to be rather worthless. And we are now facing the same danger. Today, $500 trillion worth of interest rate derivatives hang in the balance as the Federal Reserve continues to hike rates, the underlying value of the bonds start to drop like a rock. And before you fold your arms and think I'm peddling a fairy tale, it has happened just a year back. Let me clear your fuzzy memory. Back in 2022, the United Kingdom, the UK, had their guilt crisis, which was basically a bond market collapse. Interest rates in the UK started to fly up and crash the value of the British bonds. And it came to the point where even pension funds had huge margin calls. And let's take a guess what made this happen. Derivatives, of course. Because interest rates were so low a few years ago, pension funds decided to load up the truck full of LDIs. And LDIs stand for Liability Driven Investment. It's basically a bunch of government bonds bundled together and then you inject in a crazy amount of leverage to boost the returns. Pension funds bought them because they needed to generate enough cash for pensioners. We can see that 10-year British bonds were yielding less than 0.5% and that is a joke of an interest rate and in order to produce income for their pensioners, they bought a ton of LDIs which were essentially leveraged bonds. In fact, the average leverage was around 4 times. So if bond values fell by 10% due to high interest rates, 
the value of the LDIs will fall by 40%, a magnitude of four times. And because of that huge loss, money managers began to sell their LDIs and their bonds to raise cash. And this in turn perpetuated a cycle that caused bond values to crash even further, literally destroying the value of all these derivatives. And this is why Warren Buffett calls this stuff financial instruments of mass destruction. The origin of today's time bomb exploding could literally start from the US bond market. And the big threat we have again is higher interest rates. There's a common understanding that US Treasury bonds are the safest instruments around, right? People call it risk-free because at the end of the day, if push comes to shove, the Federal Reserve, they'll just step in and they'll monetize the debt. They'll simply print money to pay back the bondholders. We all know that you'll get back your money, the nominal amount will be there if you hold them to maturity, but your buying power isn't guaranteed. However, there's something even the Fed isn't prepared for, and that is the time bomb that will go tick, 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 and boom, where interest rates hit a certain level. We are now at 5.5% Fed funds, but this number could go much higher for much longer. If you look at US CPI, inflation is starting to rebound since June this year. It has gone from a low of 3% up to 3.7% in August. The reading for September is probably going to print a higher number. And why is that? Because oil prices are heading up. OPEC Plus is ramping up the inflation pain. Brand crude has flown up to almost $95. It has retraced back down to $90, $91, but the heat is still on. And this is putting Jerome Powell in a very difficult spot. He has no choice but to hike further and keep rates higher for much longer. There's even one official in the Federal Reserve forecasting a 6.25% interest rate in 2024. And let that sink in a little. As interest rates go up, bond values go down. And that is going to put pressure on all the banks especially their interest rate derivatives position. And if we look at the gross market value of interest rate derivatives, we can see it is around $11.8 trillion. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but pay attention to the underlying value. This $11.8 trillion of derivatives are actually controlling $502 trillion worth of underlying assets. That is an insane leverage of at least 40 times to 1. So if a contract is tied to the value of the bond, if the price goes down by 1% at a leverage of just 10 times, the derivative suffers a 10% drawdown. At a 40 times leverage, that's a 40% crash. And obviously, we don't know the amount of derivatives they are betting on bond values to go up, but it might be enough to implode the entire system if interest rates go higher. And let's have a refresher. According to Fidelity, a 1% rise in interest rates equates to a 9% drop in long-term bond values. A 3% rise would mean bond values could crash another 27%. And that is just the losses on the underlying asset. If you slap on leverage, it could be magnitudes worse. The damage done could be multiple times more. And every time bond values crash, it puts a greater strain on the system, especially when leverage is applied through derivatives. And we don't know if the entire system will collapse from this but we have to be mentally prepared. Things can simply fall apart like a house of cards. All right, all right, I can hear the protests coming already. Oh, Sean, it will never happen. Wall Street, they have finally learned their lesson and there won't be another repeat of this to happen. And if you believe that, oh boy, do I have a bridge to sell you. The problem with the financial system today is that the world is massively gaming the US Treasury market. The big banks and hedge funds have huge shadow bets that are fueled by derivatives. And here's the funny thing, it really doesn't matter whether the bets are long or short. The real risk is counterparty risk. In a shocking report by the Financial Times, the BIS is warning that hedge fund bets could spark turmoil in US treasuries. In fact, short positions in two-year treasury futures reached record highs in August. Traders are betting massively big against US treasuries. Basically, they are betting that the Federal Reserve will keep hiking interest rates up. According to the BIS, the current buildup of leverage short positions in US Treasury futures is a financial vulnerability worth monitoring because of the margin spirals it could potentially trigger. And just how much leverage is in the system? I think we better sit up straight for this one because it will blow your mind. An astounding leverage of 50 to 70 times is present in the US bond futures market. 
So just imagine that if the trade turns against you by 1% in the actual bond market, your paper positions could be losing at least 50 times the magnitude. And this is a recipe for disaster. We have a Fed chair who doesn't know what he's doing and Wall Street is piling on crazy bets on the bond market. Something can go wrong in an instant. Wall Street is betting for the Federal Reserve to hike rates further. They are betting that bond values will continue to crash. However, what if an economic crisis strikes and the Federal Reserve is forced to cut rates? There are 101 reasons why the Federal Reserve could suddenly do a cut and that will push bond values up and all these hedge funds and banks could be underwater. So there's risk on either side whether interest rates go up or down. Now if rates go up further, the banks could collapse as well. Remember that the US banks started to collapse at 4.5% interest rates. So what happens if rates hit 6% or even more? What if power pushes things higher? Either the banks could implode by themselves or the long paper bets could just explode. On the contrary, if Jerome Powell starts to cut rates, this could destroy the crowded short positions of all the hedge funds and this could trigger a global margin call that will wreck the entire financial system. And that is the nightmare scenario. We suddenly have a global margin call that leaves all these hedge funds and banks two choices. Either they book a loss and let their entire positions collapse or they scramble for US dollars to save their positions sending the strength of the US dollar soaring. And this is a liquidity squeeze that could literally collapse the US economy and the entire world. And the big risk is counterparty collapse. During the 2008 crisis, many banks they were trading mortgage-backed securities, MBS, with each other. So I owe you this much and you owe me that much. And when the time comes, if I want to liquidate for any reason, I expect you to pay me back. But what if my bank or the fund goes bankrupt from all these leverage bets? Now I can't pay my obligations to other counterparties and this will cause them to default on their own liabilities as well. And we are back to the great financial crisis, except this time it will be magnitudes bigger. And this will make the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, an appetizer to the main cause. The ECB also found that during a crisis like the 08 collapse, other issue of derivatives might not be able to honor their obligations. For example, if a bank collapses and you bought credit default swaps on it, which is a form of insurance, you might not get paid if the seller of those contracts goes bankrupt first. So understand how big this risk is. We are sitting on a $500 trillion time bomb and this could literally be the black swan event that takes down the global economy once again. And the big corporates could be a combination of the Federal Reserve and Wall Street again. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Will this bond bubble explode? And is this the black swan event to take down the system? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.